This is our third year, our seventh season of Conversations in Black Freedom Studies. We're here every first Thursday of the month, so you don't have to remember a date. Just remember that the first Thursday of the month, CBFS is here at the Schomburg Center. And if you've missed any of our programs, we highly encourage you, check out your program. There is a website that we've created in conjunction with our curators of the series. Um, it's blackfreedomstudies.org, where all of the videos and bios and supplementary materials from past guests are archived. So visit blackfreedomstudies.org so that you can peruse that information. I know I saw students in the house. There's a great resource there for you, blackfreedomstudies.org. Uh, so imagine you know, what we had to go through, the challenge that we had to try to organize this barrio. But we were able to do that just like the people here did in, in New York. But then, okay, all right. And then, uh, so this was our national headquarters. So, uh, so the mission had threefold, a self-determination for Puerto Rico, self-determination for all Latinos, all oppressed nations of the world, and, 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 and organizing the barrios. So even though we were for the proletariat, we wanted to organize at the barrio level. Uh, this is the People's Church. We had this church for two years, and it became our national headquarters in Chicago. And as you can see, we established ourselves pretty well. We had murals all over the wall and, and stuff like that at that time. This is what we were trying to do, build a base in the community. Uh, and he says that for a species to survive, it must have those who are willing to nurture their young and to die for them if need be. So that for me, sacrifice was not normal, it was expected. I believe that when you drink the Kool-Aid of America and forget that if you have nothing to live for, nothing to die for, then you're not fit to live, you already, already are on the road to extinction. Puerto Ricans take note. Black folk take note. Working class people take note. Look at what they're doing to our country. Insidiously, stealthily, they're taking away rights. He, um, he helped to establish, this is Eddie, he helped to establish a very important but yet unknown, largely unknown cultural arts center called the New Regan Village. Now that's very important at the time. So he's, he's in the Lords, he's very independent minded, and as Felipe had mentioned when I interviewed him, that he was a little bit of a hippie. Am I, am I right on that? Right. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So he was a little bit of a hippie, which I wanna get to later, or perhaps if I can't get to it now, definitely during Q&A, because as a hippie, there were a lot of Boricua hippies at the New Rican Village in the Low East Side that were very Marxist, and very Boricua, right? So that sort of, and the aesthetics, and their bodily aesthetics, that sort of ruptures what we would think of pretending to be a hibaro, or pretending to be, or sort of taking on this identity as, as being black, right, in, in the context of New York City. So I think it, it, it opens up new ways of looking at how they were assuming a new form of identity um, upon themselves. He was easygoing with a wry and self-effacing sense of humor that disarmed and charmed. Chacha's countless stints in prison gave him street cred and an arsenal of good stories to tell. Over the course of several hours, Chacha struggled to find the words that would best convey to listeners an urgent and new matter. The turf over which they had been staking a claim all their lives was facing its greatest threat yet. Over drinks and loud noise, Chacha called on his closest partners in crime and even his opponents to join him at an upcoming neighborhood meeting of the Office of Urban Renewal. The demolition plans for Lincoln Park were scheduled for discussion. To his dismay, his peers didn't care. Chacha was engaged in an internal struggle over the course of his future, begun in, in a prison cell the previous spring. Did he want to be involved with petty crime for the rest of his life, or was there something bigger that he could commit to? 